January 9th, 2005, Ceres, California. A security camera captures a gunman ambushing two police officers at a liquor store. The gunman maneuvers in a semicircle motion, which is a textbook military tactic called slicing the pie. One officer dies and another is critically wounded. The shooter is none other than 19-year-old Andreas Raya. The police and the media at the time claimed he was a hardcore gang member who joined the Marine Corps to later come back to the streets of California to terrorize its citizens. However, I wasn't falling for it. The only thing the media covered was his affiliations with the Norteños. They didn't interview his family, schoolmates, teachers or neighbors. I, on the other hand, want to introduce another speculation, and that being PTSD. My question is, was Andreas Raya a killer waiting to be brought to heel, or a young man who joined the Marine Corps to later come back with PTSD, which pushed him to his edge? Hi, my name is Jeff Truman, and I make true crime and business conspiracy videos once a week. So consider subscribing, and welcome to The Jeff Truman Show. Gangs, they're in our community, our streets, and our military. However, gang members have been a part of the military for years and have also been formed after military activity. For example, after the Civil War, a group of Confederate soldiers came together and formed what is now known as the KKK. After World War II, a group of soldiers came together and formed also what is known as the Hells Angels. It was not until the end of the Vietnam War that gang activity took a turn for the worst. The Marine Corps wanted willing bodies to go to Vietnam, and in that case they drafted active gang members from the streets, ignoring their gang ties. After the war, a new type of gang emerged. Gangs went from using fists, knives, bats, to using guns. For reference, Crips started using guns from the mid to late 70s, which was after the Vietnam War. It is common for gang members, whether active or passive, to join the military as either A, a way to get out of the hood, or B, according to some sources, well, this. Yes, Marines, why they join the Marines? To shoot guns, hold things up. And now he's got gang members doing that. <sighs> Andreas Ryan. The son of Mexican immigrants who grew up in the subsidized neighborhoods of Ceres, California. What you might not know about Ceres, just like every other hood, gang influence is a large part of the culture. In Ceres, California, one gang ruled Raya's neighborhood, and that's the Norteños. Norteño meaning Northerner. This is a gang that was formed in prison during the 60s by Hispanic inmates who divided themselves into two gangs based on their geographical origin. If you're from the north, you're a Norteño. If you're from the south, you're a Sereño. Ever since he was a young boy, Andreas Raya was fascinated by the military. And so immediately after high school graduation, he enlisted as a Marine. And after six months of training, he was deployed to Iraq as a supply truck driver. Most sources state that he saw little to no direct combat. And some also state that he did witness an IED explosion that caused him to lose his hearing temporarily. After a seven month long tour in Iraq, he returned home as a decorated Marine with honors. Now this is where the story takes a turn for the worst. Raya and some of his friends broke into a local school and vandalized it. And with a torn up American flag, he spelled out F George Bush. But this was just the beginning. On the rainy night of January 9th, 2005, dispatchers received a 911 call from George's liquor store. The caller said that a man walked in and claimed that he was shot at. The man who made the claim was none other than Andreas Raya. They also said that he was acting strange and he had a gun. The first responders were Sam Rhino and Chris Milton. Rhino walked out of the car and peered through a glass corner building, revealing a man in a poncho. When Rhino asked to see the man's hands, Andreas Raya peeled back his poncho to reveal an SKS assault rifle and fired at the two officers. The glass shattered 
and Officer Rhino fell to the ground. Raya advanced while shooting in a semicircle pattern, which is a military tactic called slicing the pie. Suddenly, another squad car appears, and it's none other than 33-year-old John King. What Raya didn't know about John King, that he was a former army sergeant stationed out of Fort Bragg. So the playing field just got a bit even. King unloaded round after round, forcing Raya to fall back. And just then, yet another cop car emerges off camera. And in it is Officer Howard Stevenson. At that time, Howard couldn't see Raya, but Raya could see him. With his illegally modified SKS rifle, that had armor-piercing bullets, he used yet another military tactic called suppression fire that overwhelmed Stevenson and he was hit before he could get to safety. Raya later moved in and shot Officer Stevenson twice in the head at point-blank range. Immediately, he retreated into a dark alley and after a couple of hours of reinforcements and cops creating a perimeter, Raya suddenly jumps a fence and tries to charge some police officers. And it was at this exact moment that he was shot and killed, ending the tragic event. Judging from what I could find online in the documentary about Andreas Raya, no one is sure about his gang affiliations. Whether he was a hardcore Norteño since his adolescence is not clear. The only thing I could find were some pictures of him and his friends flashing gang signs and wearing the gang's colors. There were no talks of a criminal record, the sheriff or the local police officer stating that he had runnings with a 19-year-old Andreas Raya. I did however find some comments under some videos about Raya of people claiming to know him and saying he was a real solid dude. And also an article stating the following, family members deny Raya's gang ties and blame the military. Hilda Mercado told the New York Times that Raya died like a true Mexican, he died standing on his feet. End of quote. I don't really trust some of these claims as it could be people trying to gain attention. But since there is no sources showing his actual involvement as a gang member rather than pictures with his friends, which in reality is expected if he grew up in a neighborhood filled with gang culture, obviously some of his friends and neighbors would be gang members and hence him knowing how to throw gang signs or even repping the gang's colors. In my opinion, the pictures don't mean much, only that he was affiliated and he knew people in the gang. But stating that he was a hardcore gang member from a bunch of pictures is a bit far-fetched. PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Most veterans leave the war behind and come home to peace and loving families. They're named heroes in the eyes of men, but little do we know the psychological trauma that they face. The privilege of not witnessing sounds of gunfire, bombs exploding, and men and women crying for their lives is a luxury that we have as civilians. To any veterans watching this, thank you for your service and welcome home. From what I could find, after the war, Raya was never the same. Some sources do claim that he saw little to no combat, and some sources say that he was involved in an explosion that caused him to suffer temporary hearing loss. The fact of the matter is, he saw something. When he came back, his family members said that he couldn't hold a conversation anymore. He would stare at a corner mid-conversation and once, when he was at a party, he fell asleep and once he woke up, he screamed at his friends and reached for a gun that wasn't there. Raya told his family gruesome stories at Thanksgiving when he came back. Stories of them invading houses in Iraq and shooting them up and due to personal convictions, he couldn't pull the trigger. He showed his family pictures of a guy's hand hanging off and right after he came back, he started to question the war and started to do his own research and encouraged his relatives to watch Michael Moore's anti-war film. He kept saying the war had no point, that it was all for oil and that it made no sense. In conclusion, Andreas Raya's actions were wrong and foolish, and the drive towards his actions were unknown. The only thing we could do is speculate, because the only person who knows the truth is Andreas Raya. My condolences to his family, and to the family of Howard Stevenson. May their souls rest in peace. To the veterans out there suffering from PTSD, seek help before it's too late, 
and may God bless you. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to leave me a comment and subscribe because I make true crime and business conspiracy videos once a week. Give this video a thumbs up and remember to keep trekking fam.